Hey guys, today I'm here to discuss a sort of controversial resume topic with you. Whether or not it's okay to include a photo in your resume. If you've looked up resume examples online, you've definitely seen plenty of resumes with photos included. But if you've done some more research on the topic, you've probably read that including a photo in your resume is not a great idea. So which one is it? In this video, we're going to give you our comprehensive take on the topic so you can make an informed decision. Let's get started. Career advice by Nova Resume. The first thing you want to know is that resume photo rules vary from country to country. In some countries, including a photo on your resume is a huge no-no and is generally very discouraged. While in other countries, the rules are not really set in stone, which means it's up to you to decide whether to include a photo or not. Long story short, don't include a photo in your resume if you're based in the UK, Ireland or in the United States. These countries have strict anti-discrimination and labor laws. This means that companies based in these countries need to be able to prove their hiring practices are free of any profiling based on race, gender, age or appearance. If your resume has a photo on it, it can be hard for employers to prove that their decision making was unbiased. So they might reject resumes with photo on them just to be on the safe side. This said, some appearance focused roles such as modeling or acting are exceptions to this rule. On the other hand, it's okay to include a photo in your resume in most other countries, including Austria, Australia, Belgium, France, Spain, China, Israel, and others. As long as you're not based in the UK, Ireland, or the US, chances are including a photo in the resume is acceptable. But just because you can include a photo, does it mean that you should? Well, at the end of the day, it really boils down to your preferences. If you take a... F if you think uh, that a photo might lead to discrimination or bias, or you simply don't have a professional photo to include in your resume, then you can just skip it altogether. No harm, no foul. No harm, no foul. <laughs> but if you ask us, though, a high quality photo to your resume can potentially push the odds in your favor. May the odds be ever in your favor. Imagine you're an HR manager reviewing these three uh, resumes in a single glance. Which of these three is going to catch your attention? Yep, is the third one. Adding a photo to your resume adds a face to the candidate. Without the photo, the hiring manager doesn't know if the candidate's a real person or a walking resume. With a photo, though, things become a bit more personal. The faceless resume turns into a real person, and the hiring manager is more likely to remember your application. That said, it's also very important to get your resume photo right. If the photo on your resume looks like something you'd use for your dating profile, for example, or if it's a low quality, unprofessional photo, then a photo on your resume is going to do more harm than good. So let's talk about how you can make sure that the photo on your resume will boost your chances of getting hired. First things first, it's important for the photo itself to be of a high quality. If you've got a phone with a decent camera, and a friend with a knack for taking a good photos, you can get it done in a home setting. That said, I really, really recommend getting a professional photographer or going to a photo studio. While it can be a bit of a hassle, professional photos can work wonders for both your resume and LinkedIn profile. Speaking of LinkedIn, don't forget to match your LinkedIn profile photo with the one that you add to your resume. In addition to the photo quality, it's also important to get a photo itself right. For starters, you want to give off the right vibe. This means that the photo should not be anything too flashy or distracting, no crazy haircuts or weird fashion choices. Remember, the focus of your resume should be your professional experience, not how handsome you look in your photo, you champ. You should also be smiling in the photo, not, not frowning, looking angry or anything along those lines. To kind of wrap up the topic, here are some examples of good and bad professional headshots. As you can see, the photos on the left give off just the right mix of professional yet personal feel, while the photo on the right, on the other hand, are a bit too personal. Would you go on a date with them? Sure. Invite them for a job interview though? Mm, probably not. Once you've got your photo done, it's time to place it on your resume. Our key tip here is that you should make sure that a photo is just the right size. While you may look great, you want to use the precious space on your resume to include essential information like your work experience, your resume summary, and skills. 
If the photo ends up taking one third of your resume, you'll just end up wasting valuable space. A small, best precise photo at the top right or left of your resume should be more than enough. And once your photo's on your resume, you're good to go. That's all for today, folks. If you like our videos and want to watch more resume and job search content, click the subscribe button below. Alternatively, you can also visit our website, novoresume.com, for more cutting edge resume templates, educational content, and more. Until next time. Career advice by Novo Resume. Can I start again? <laughs>